103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, October 31st, Halloween 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween. And our guest today is George Brown, the second and a half, formerly from Brooklyn. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstitions. If you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. Here we have a group of over a thousand atheists. It's called Atheist Society of Knoxville. And we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break. Wombat, well, what's our show going to be about today? It's called Atheist Society of Knoxville. The acronym is also ASK. A-S-K. I right. love it. I love it. Ask. I love it. I love be it. sure That's... you ask those questions. You got to keep asking questions. This is a great little uh-huh. business card, too. When I saw that, I was like, this is the group. This is the group. This is the best group. Uh, so, hey, today we're going to be talking about robot-controlled pastors, or if John was here, robot pastors. I think that would be a good one. Uh, if it's going to be a good conversation, but before we get into it, I'm going to throw it up to one of my favorite times where we talk to everybody that's here, see what they've been up to. We'll throw it up to George. George, what you been up to? It's good to see you. I can't remember. What? You can't it's remember? It's one, one of the one of the aspects of being old. Is you just forget stuff. Um, you know, it is Halloween, right? One, you yeah, it's uh, the matzah. Well, I, and I, I bumped into a guy. You want to tell us? <laughs> well, I, I bumped into a guy in the supermarket, but I thought I was going to talk about that later on in the show. Sure, it's, sure, sure, sure. We could talk about it uh, second half for sure because I want to get into the robot pastors. But tell me about this matzah overdose that you just had. Oh, it's terrible. Um, I, I, you know, here halfway between Knoxville and Chattanooga, mm. <clears throat> there are two supermarkets in my town out of six that sell Jewish products, Jewish food products. Okay. And of course, as you know, I am a an organic Jewish atheist. Uh-huh. So, you know, I, I miss I miss my old soul food from my grandmother and like uh, Jewish commercial food has been a big corporate thing, you know, and it's like one, one company in New Jersey has kind of cornered the market in, in all Jewish food that's retail, you know, in the big stores. Sure. Sure. And they, they've been, this company has like been bought and sold and bought and sold and bought and sold, you know, by by uh, an investment um, conglomerate and then sold to somebody else. And they used to make all their stuff here in the United States. And all of a sudden, like, I, you know, I go to the supermarket and it's all coming from the Mediterranean. And I thought, what is going on? You know, the gefilte fish is from Morocco. Yeah. They got the, they got Jews all around the world. You're a Jew in, in Tennessee, basically. I, yeah, it, yeah. It's a, it's well, a, well, I'm saying this stuff all used it all used to be made in the United States. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay. And then and like, what? They've they've third worlded the whole thing, you know. So, I mean, the the matzah is coming from Israel. The gefilte fish is coming from Morocco. The uh-huh. borscht is from somewhere in the U.S. The wine they sold off. So where'd you get and, the matzah from, and why'd you get so much of it? I just well, the thing is, you know, real official matzah hmm. official. is very. Very boring. I mean, it's, let's face okay. it. It's like eating cardboard. Sure, sure. It ta- it ta- it's as tasty as cardboard, but you can put stuff on the matzah, and it's really okay. good. Okay. So, I I found I could go into the store and I could get matzah with onion powder and salt and uh, poppy seeds and stuff like that on it. Right. So I, I I went on a binge. Ah, there it is. And. What it, this is unleavened bread, mm. you know, and it's like eating lead balls, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I got very sick. 
I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. And then I had to look it up online and see, you know, it's the, the internet the cure is here. for matzo balls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the cure for eating too much matzo is just stop eating it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just one pink bottle. That's it. It's just like you get this, get a bunch of this. You'll be okay. Yeah, uh, so um anyway, I'm reco- I'm recovering now and yeah, I've been trying to work on my binges. I've rediscovered pancakes, and I don't like. No. I don't like uh, the feeling by the time you reach your what is it, the thirteenth pancake, where you're just like, why oh. am I doing this? What's going on here? And you have like fourteen more to go, and you're just like, I need to stop. Pancakes for me is just like you can't have three because it takes too long to make them, but you can't have like 10 because you'll die at the process. So like, what's the perfect number to like make and all that stuff? Yes. Hard. Larry, how you been? What's going on with you? Oh, I started working on a new job this week. Oh, new job. Strange. Nice. I haven't worked any job for like a year and a half because COVID and I'm old, uh, but it's interesting. And uh, I'd like to hold off on, on the details for a while until I, uh, feel more secure about talking about it but when you're I've ready to drop the week. album i'm ready to listen to it yeah just got a whole week of employment behind me okay so go L- larry let me tell you something you uh-huh. always in your back pocket have voice acting or narration or something that you could do right now there are websites that want your buttery smooth southern draw <laughs> ready to go it's just like do you want to buy some shoes draw? i, I don't have shoes. a draw <laughs> <laughs> You can make it happen. You can make it happen. But people, just I guess like, I could talk about civil oh, war. Oh, that's good too. That's good too. <laughs> that's real good. But yeah, I, I, you got a killer voice. You should use it. You got it. It's seasoned. Let, let it roll. Like, I, if Google it, you'll be. I can, okay. I can cool. send you links. I can send you links. See what I can do. You, you sound really authentic. You all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a uh, there's a fun website called Fiverr. Um, if you ever want to check it out, it's Fiverr with two R's. Basically, you type in any random hobby that you like or something that you want to do, and there'll be people who need that skill, and they'll pay you five bucks a pop to be able to do it. And so, like, if you are yeah, good with yeah. a mic, they'll be like, "Hey, we need someone who's good with a mic who sounds like this." Can you say these four words? And it's like, boom, you say the four words. And next thing you know, they may be in a commercial somewhere, but you got $5. Hey, I'll take it. You mean, you mean these are, these are these, these are the people who call me up from India to sell me uh, car insurance. Maybe, maybe they may want to be like, Hey, can you ask someone for car insurance? And so we can record it and use it as a play. You don't know what you're contributing yeah. to, but you do get five bucks. And sometimes that's yeah. ass, right? Cool. I'll check it out. Guys. I want to tell you something that I thought was interesting last week. Um, I wanted to talk about it, but we didn't have the appropriate uh, time to set up. So this time I wanted to talk about something that was kind of interesting to me. I am a big fan of Global Atheist News. It's run by John Richards. He's been a, a member on this show a number of times. And one of his updates on Global Atheist News is stories from around the world with, that relate to religion and specifically atheism. And one of the coolest stories that he brought up was the idea that a lot of churches are bringing up um, that they're upset that their pastors have become AI. And I was like, what does that even mean? Well, I looked it up and it turns out there's a growing phase of people relying on AI apps or machines that you can pull into your home or into a congregation to give program sermons or algorithm-based answers to religious questions to support the church, to help people get connected with God through the use of technology. And I know it sounds crazy. Otherwise, trust me, you take the technology out, it still sounds crazy to me either way. But what's really, really funny is like, there's a passion for moving churches towards higher level technology where they use AI to hear people's complaints. And what an algorithm does is hear the complaint, process it with the database, and then output a, a, a statement or an answer that's just as indirect, inconclusive, and misleading as any pastor would give. And the funny example that they did in the video was like, a lady was like, is there a heaven? And the AI pastor was like, 
well, Jesus says it's easier to get into heaven than it is for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. And I'm like, that didn't answer the question whatsoever. And it's, <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's like almost exactly what the pastor would say it's kind of yeah. in his own right too. And yeah. the, the, the cut video after that was a pastor being very angry that there could be potential for AIs to replace pastors. Cause it's like, well, that's no, will never happen. Cause a- robots don't have souls. <laughs> we don't either. <laughs> pastors don't. Well, I, I know it brought up a lot of questions, Larry. Nobody does. Well, how? Yeah, do, yeah it seems like a. It, it would be. Would it be any easier to prove that a robot has a soul than a human being has a soul, Larry? You think? Um, well, first you got to prove the soul's real. I yeah. Mean, that they actually exist. And then we can go looking for them. Once we have one, then we can test in a lab and find out what kind of attributes they have. Yeah. Then we can start uh, examining other things to see if they might exist there too. Mm-hmm. But at this point in thousands of years, the religion has pushed fear about your soul and where it's going to be after you die. They've never produced one and never even given us evidence that there was one. No, there have been, how do I put it? There's never been good evidence. There's have been people who say, Hey, I died and I saw my grandma or I yeah, died and I went well, to like a yeah, white place or I most, felt really good. As most doctors would tell you, that's not death. That's mm. near death. And your brain goes through some awfully strange stuff when it's deprived of oxygen and you're getting closer and closer to death. It's going to, with, with a lack of stimuli, it's going to start producing its own. What about when people say, Hey, I listened to this really good song. That was a Christian song. And I just got filled with the Holy spirit. And that's, that was above and beyond me. I couldn't have had this feeling without having a spiritual connection to God. Um, well, spiritual connection is one thing, um, actually having a spirit, a physical spirit or, um, supernatural spirit is something else. I mean, a team, a sports team will talk about their team spirit. Sure. Uh, you, you talk about being down in the dumps and maybe in low end spirits, but that's just your low in your emotions. Uh, it's not an actual spirit where what they're doing is using equivocation, mm-hmm. um, to muddy the subject. No, I can it. I can tell you this, and George, I'd like to get your feedback on this. I do actually kind of like the idea of ARI robots because, you know, have you seen, I know Jews don't have this, but have you ever seen what a confessional is in Catholic church? Yes, yes, I can address that. You can, okay. I'm saying, wouldn't it be better to talk to a robot than an actual person who walks out and is just like, did you hear what Mary, you want to hear what Mary just told me about? It's kind of crazy, right? (laughs) Well, you know, uh, my mind flashed in talking about the business side of this. Hmm. There, There was a TV series, I think it was in the 19th, 90s called Bally Kiss Angel. It's, okay. a, it's an Irish um, sitcom. It ran for a number of years, and it, it's about an English priest who is sent to a little village in Ireland to officiate there and all his trials and tribulations that happened. But the very first episode uh, shows a truckload of Italian confession booths, modern, sleek Italian confession booths on top of a truck, and one of them falls off and goes rolling down the hillside. And the, the local entrepreneur is going to go into business selling these confession booths. Okay. They're, they're like ready to... Ready to implement, you know, they have the doors for the priests to come in one side. Yeah, it's, it's an oval metal container with a door on one side for the priest and the door for the parishioner on the sure, other side. Sure, sure, you know, I found, so that, I found... that the very first shot in the series is this. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the appeal with a confession booth is that one, you get to talk to somebody about something. Maybe it's not in the yeah. format of like what a professional therapist would be able to provide or offer, but you still get the basal i am at least talking to another human being about a problem that i have and there's a lot of value in hearing yourself put thoughts into words and and functionally you know format them in a way that's communicative to both someone else and maybe for you to hear what you're saying and appreciate the sentiments that you're willing to offer about a maybe a really difficult situation that you're going through but also it also provides you privacy too to have that blank wall between the two of you and i find if you had a robot, couldn't that like give you both at the same time? You're talking to somebody and you get a, uh, what do you think, Larry? 
Well, I think that we ought to step back just for a second and mm. consider how much power um, that gives the church the, to mm. the preacher when everybody in their their congregation, their village, whatever, comes in and tells them their deepest, darkest secrets. Uh, it's not to be ignored, especially if those congregants are children and these um, preachers are coming across as men of God and to be totally trusted, and then they aren't trustworthy. Right. So it's a very, a very um, dangerous position for the for the congregants to be in, and and a lot of power for the church to have. I can also um, tell you, it's, it's kind of yeah. scary to leave the church when you know there's a dude who knows all your deepest, darkest secrets. Right, right. And, uh, and if there was a way that we could get a, an AI preacher uh, that, of course, w the AI is a high technology device sure. and technology is notorious for recording and playing back and, you know, and, and taking samples and all that. If we could get some kind of guarantee that the AI would not be recording your conversation, uh, then I think it would be uh, worthy to pursue that way there wouldn't be a person out there with all your secrets but how would a... we guarantee that <laughs> yeah. uh, George, what do you got? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry i'm laughing I'm, because i'm thinking the punchline is playing in my head and you guys don't know what i'm laughing about um is this um robot preacher or priest is this is this robot in the cloud yeah probably I mean, the cloud is. I mean, right. the, there anyway. the heavenly cloud, basically. The heavenly cloud. <laughs> this is cloud stuff to me is just all BS. You know, it's a it's a service somewhere. I mean, let's. It's a service it. somewhere. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. There's a physical box somewhere that has your. <laughs> and who's going to run this priest? Is it going to be Google or is it going to be Facebook? I mean, she was. What is the, the so master what is violators of privacy internationally? You know, so if there I'm, is God who knows what you are thinking and knows when you're awake or right. knows you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake, if there's a God like that, it's Facebook. Yeah. I would say I would say this. Um, I I see some immediate benefits with having an AI pastor compared to an actual one, because that human who knows everything is valuable and just as valuable as I am. And, and, and that could lead me to a lot of situations where there's a human being who knows not only the deepest secrets I have, but everyone else around me. And that's a, such a power imbalance that I don't know if I want someone like that in the community that I live in. Mm -hmm. But the flip side would be if it is a cloud-based network and it's owned by a corporation or a company who don't necessarily have my best interests at heart, how do I get that guarantee that they're not recording my data or implementing it or mirroring it in some way where they have now demographic information on me and they can use that information against my will or, or for their best interest and not mine. That sucks too. Larry, what's up? Well, we need, we're talking about a Catholic church right now, but there are a lot of churches out there that use the same type of information gathering to, to gain power over the congregants. Uh, the first one that comes to mind outside of the Catholic church is Scientology. Oh yeah. Uh, what they do, the, the very first thing they do is they sit you down, put in a recorder in front of you and tell you to uh, relieve yourself of your thetans, uh, bad thoughts or, or theoretically other alien souls that have invaded your body and you need to get them all out. Sure. Of course, they're recording all of this and all of this goes into an archive. So this is something that they have over all of their uh, congregants as well. Yeah. I mean, I would say Christians do it in the same way, maybe in a much more indirect, but like I've noted that you go to a Christian place First thing they want to know is, okay, who's the first person to have been here? Or who hasn't, who's this your first visit stand up? And there's the peer pressure to stand up. I never stand up, but I see people who stand up and then it's like, great. Now everybody in that church knows to ask that guy, Hey, where are you from? What's your name? What's going mm -hmm. on here? Oh, okay. That's your job in the back of their head. Okay. So that should be your income bracket. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you become a member, you're going to have so many more opportunities to invest more here and blah, 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 blah. And it's really hard to keep that many people who are friendly from becoming your friends, but they are part of an organization, right. whether they realize it or not genuinely or not, that they are here to source information from you to ultimately get a tenth of your paycheck. In a, in and a, as soon as you uh, don't do what the church is telling you to do, how quickly they will turn their backs on you. And then who's the next guy? <laughs> yeah, right, right. What well, can we not get out of you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing about this AI that we're talking about, and I've, sure. I've always had this in the back of my mind for, well, for quite a while, is that there, we're going to eventually 
develop an AI that's capable of doing its own thought. The one that I hear you describing is basically one that answers questions. It's pre-programmed to answer certain questions certain ways. Yeah, but a true keyboard. AI would have to take the information that you give it, evaluate it, and be able to come up with logical statements that would cover them. And will that uh, AI ever be in a church? Will that be the first AI the church kicks out? It's just like, hey, is there yeah, a that's what I was Yeah, we don't know. We, yeah. Sorry. But the thing about it is, uh, let's, hey, let's take like Christianity, you know, uh, a guy who when he dies, he comes back okay, and then he flies off into heaven. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about when he does die uh, or when he resurrects, uh, uh, the graves open up and people come out. Now, is this, I mean, if we give this information to an AI who has virtually no information otherwise to uh, what happens, you know, after you die, he's going to take it as gospel. I mean, literally. God. Now, there is an interesting, Larry, you touched on such an interesting thing. So if basically what you're saying, if we make a Christian AI, would that Christian AI maybe ever get cognitive dissonance in the future? Or That's when where it's I'm exposed going. to more information, it'll be like, right. whoa, 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 all this first <laughs> bunch of data I got is incorrect or it doesn't comply with, it doesn't comport with, with, with what with I've this been told previously. Yeah, and it this, gets worse it's weird. because, I mean, uh, you know how it is in, like in America, we have if one religion gets to t preach in school, then we have to let all other religions preach in school. Yes. It's equality of religion. Yeah. So once we get uh, Christianity and the AI, the other religion is going to say, wait a minute. <laughs> You know, we want to be able to put our version of the, uh, right. the afterlife story into your computer. And then we we'll have one AI sitting there taking all these different religions in from all over the world and having to try to make sense of it. I love this movie pitch that you're making. I love it. I love it. And it gets all the different religions and he's just, or that he or she is just like, none of this makes sense. We got to get rid of all of it. And humanity's like, no, we can't. And he's like, okay, well then get rid of humanity. And then that's why we have Terminator. And then that's like the prequel to Terminator. Boom. There you go. Skynet yeah. just taking over everything. I want to throw out one quick little silly story. Um, I got, I was planning on getting a, a, a smart vacuum cleaner. And, um, I, every once in a while I get a new hankering for a new piece of gadgetry and I want to see if I can get a smart vacuum. They're so dumb, expensive, and they're so dumb in general. Uh, for the most part, the cheap ones move randomly through your home. And as long as they run enough times, they'll get everywhere in your house. But now mm -hmm. they have smart ones that have Wi-Fi connection cameras on top of them. LIDAR and GPS navigation. And I'm like, I don't know if I want my vacuum cleaner to be that smart. Like, I don't know if I want my vacuum cleaner to be like, Hey, <laughs> could you move? I'm yeah. trying to vacuum this. While. I was like, yeah. Ooh, you're just a thing. I'm getting dressed here. Put that camera somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I go to work and it's just harassing my cat. It's just following mm -hmm. me around everywhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> they have now, now where they have all those smart technologies plus AI on top of them. And with that AI, they can actually recognize what they're looking at. It's like, oh, those are keys on the floor. That's electrical cord. That's dog poop. I can see all these different things, know what they are, put them in a database, locate them in the house and avoid them appropriately. And not only that, but I can go back to my station, charge myself and dump the dirt into like a separate basin. It's really, really smart, but unfortunately it's still a work in progress. And I feel like if I gave it another five years, they will finally have one perfect vacuum robot that does everything that I want. That's more or less in the price range that I'm willing to pay for it. And what, so what you were alluding to Larry is I, I know we are in the early stages of AI robots and they don't seem that impressive. They just seem like they're just answering questions, but as we get better at personifying people in, in, in AI format or technology wise, we can make the guys so, cl so close to AI, but is not AI that we wouldn't know the difference between the two. And at that point I get really, really scared when it's like, I can't tell if I'm praying to a robot or, or a pastor, or if I'm getting experience from God, because the systems are just so well informed and are just following simple algorithms that they don't have to think for themselves and come to a, like a, a, a issue, a crisis of conscious when it comes to what I'm teaching isn't comporting with reality. It could just be a dead non-thinking system that's outputting information that's palatable and convincing to me because I'm willing to have a low state. How do I put this? I have such a low standard of evidence that I'm willing to believe anything. And then this machine tells me the perfect combination of words to make me believe whatever I want to say. And my, my, <laughs> my doomsday scenario isn't a perfectly smart AI robot. That's like 
forget humanity, none of these religions work. It's more of like a corporation that's figured out the perfect formula to tell anyone the perfect lie to make them kill anybody or follow no. any sort of order or, or anything. More like that. than that. Yeah. Even uh, more even more than that is that because it is um, let's say Facebook esque mm -hmm. or Google esque. It knows what you want to hear, what you as a specific you individual, and it will feed that back that to you. you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're subject to it. And that's a terrifying thing. If anything showed me anything from the last four, the last four, uh, four years before the last year that we just had, but with the last Republican administration, it's like people are willing to listen to anything that pieces them, even if it doesn't even make sense on top of each other. Some of the most frustrating things I see when I'm in Tennessee are people who have don't tread on me stickers and the police state blue strip line sticker on the same back of a truck. It's like, that this group is the group that will tread on you. <laughs> These groups are not compatible with each other. You can't be pro police state and against police state on the same thing. You're you're blowing my mind. People who have like the Confederate flag and the American flag like right next to each other on the same bumper. It's like these. This is not America. This is literally <laughs> anti-American. Yeah. yeah, these guys yeah. lost. These but, guys tried you to know, over that thing. What are you doing? See, Doubter Five, you said that um, if we had religion in the school, that we'd have to let all the religions come in. Mm -hmm. But I have to say that, you know, uh, all three of us talking here today are right here in the Bible Belt. And uh, you guys are, I think, in cities, and I'm in a little city in between two big ones. And, and so where I live, there's a newspaper that comes out four days a week. And on Friday, they put out a list of churches. And I counted them up one day. Oh, no. And in, in my county, so the, the listing is for one county, um, big county, and one little tiny county. And between these two counties, there are 167 official Baptist churches. Oh. And in addition to that, there are 37 unofficial Baptist churches. And then there are the Methodist churches, and there's something like 60 of those. Sure, yeah, but we're not talking about just churches being around on the landscape. We're talking about uh, access to government resources yeah, to teach yeah. our yes. children. Well, I know that. I know yeah, what I'm saying is that. On property and stuff like that. What I'm saying is that um, it's possible in my mind to see, you know, th this this particular sector of the religious landscape has such a huge megaphone. Mm. I agree. I agree. That I could but. I could actually I could just about envision this one sector of Christianity just yeah. railroading everybody else out in, in think, the public sector. Right. But we we're gonna need to take a break. We're at the bottom of the hour now. <laughs> uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we will be right back right after this short break. Thanks. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought a Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now let's talk about the ASK, or Atheist Society of Knoxville. Uh, we were founded in 2002. We're in our 19th year. ASK has over 1,000 members, and we, we, we meet in person weekly uh, at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us out on the patio. If you'd like to join our Tuesday evening Zoom meeting, you can email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat at se or that let's chat se at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook, meetup.com, atheist, uh, sorry, knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, start, start one. one. Right. Wombat, well, where do we want to pick up? I think we can close up our talk on AI pastors. We're laughing about them now. They seem silly now, but the thing is, AI can improve a lot faster than our ability to, as a, as a society, 
appreciate true things apart from false things. And because AIs can so much more quickly, rapidly evolve, we need to be even more aware of the fact that it could be a potential danger in the future when a society or corporation or a religion comes up with the perfect algorithm to be incredibly persuasive to people, to let them hear what they want to hear, and us to be remember and, and steadfast on the idea that we should always still ask questions, even if we're hearing ideals or truths that we want to be true or, or things that we want to be true. Even if we have a truth, question it. But basically question everything because that's a great way to make sure that we can separate true things from false things. Uh, sorry if I'm a little bit low on that. Hopefully I don't got to repeat that. But uh, hey, I want to go into some stories. George, why don't you, why don't you tell us with that story that you're talking about? Well, I just, I just want to mention too that, that way back in 1984, Dang, I, got my first, time ago. I got my first computer. It was an IBM PC, a genuine IBM PC. And um, uh, hard drives were optional. Even floppy drives were optional. This, this computer ran on uh, cassette tapes. But I got I got the floppy drives, and one of the first discs I ever got was a computer psychiatrist. And what? Um, yeah, in 1984. Oh, Larry, you're nodding your head. Have you seen this? Oh, I've, I've seen them. Yeah, I've never seen them. Yeah, it was really funny, and it was programmed to, you know, like if there was some silence, it would say, "Yes, uh huh, go on." What? You know? I feel and like at the I'm end, of, even during the conversation. Yeah, wow. and at, at the at the end of at the end of fifty minutes, it would say we're going to have to stop now. Yeah, but and most of the ones I saw at that time were text based, so that it, like if you were talking yes, about was. work, they could come back. And it would pick up on the work as the subject, and then yes. throw it back to you on the next sentence. So tell and us that was in nineteen eighty four. Yeah. yeah, and 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 so uh, and and, and if it didn't know what else to do, it would come back and say, "Now about your mother." <laughs> So, what you talking okay. about my mother? <laughs> Basically, so, this has been around for a while, and they're continuing to work on it. And so, we should just be vigilant. Yeah. Yeah. Be vigilant. <laughs> Ask questions, right? Yeah. Or vigilant. Yeah. That's great. That's a great little. That's a great story, George. Um, uh, as an update to my vacuum situation, I have not settled on one, but the one I do want terrifies me in terms of the data that it picks up. So this one will actually go through your home. It'll map everything. It'll take pictures of everything. It'll recognize what each of the things are and puts it up into a database that it uses to inform itself and other similar machines i won't tell you what the brand name is and i was just like i don't want that thing in my, <laughs> my house so what i did last night was i just took my old vacuum out cleaned it and i was just like you're clean i feel a lot better with you i think i'm just gonna just do the corded version anyway george what's up no, well I, I was thinking about the you know um it, it, about these churches that you, uh, computer churches or, yeah, or computer, computer churches. pastors, um, you could select your own on the basis of, of uh, what would appeal to you as having giving you a good time, you know. In, in, Calif yeah. in California, they have a tradition. I went to this. Um, they have traffic schools. You can find them in, the, you used to find them in the yellow pages. If you get any kind of minor infraction driving, you have to go to traffic school, driving like a touch-up driving school, and then you could get your tra traffic ticket written off. So it was bound to happen. I um, I got nabbed by a cop in the town of Pinal, yeah. Pinal, California. You know, I zipped off a freeway ramp a little too fast, and the guy was wa waiting in a speed trap, you know, and he nailed me. Gotcha. And so, and so I went to Laugh a Minute Traffic School. Laugh a Minute you know? Traffic School? Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and so the idea was that you, you went to this, uh, to this classroom on the weekend, and the teachers stood up there and told jokes. Any jokes? Or like any jokes. jokes. What she did was she she told any jokes, and finally I got tired of this, and I said, "Well, what does this have to do with driving?" You know, and everybody got mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> For her, it's a government paycheck. Did she answer your question? Yeah, that's right. Well, she these are 
businesses. They're in it for the money. And yeah. and so they advertised this as a traffic comedy school, you know, and and she was a stand-up comic and she was practicing her routines. Wow. On the... wow. So I'm just thinking of, you know, pick your computer church based on, you know, on the gag routines of the right. robot pastor. I, I got a scary one for you. Um, I, there was a movie that came out called Golden Eye or something like that. Uh, not Golden Eye, but some movie where a guy was basically listening to his phone give him instructions about how to save the world. And it would be like, shoot the bad guys. And he'd be like, shooting the bad guys. It was the dumbest movie possible. Like, here's a car, and he, and the phone will tell him, take the car that's coming in the next 30 seconds, and he'll take the car. But anyway, uh, I was really shocked when I realized that people knew what the movie was because I thought he was talking to a person. I thought he was talking to a person who was giving instructions. It was like, everyone was like, no, he's like listening to his Google assistant. And I'm like, why, why didn't they just get a voice that sounded like Google assistant? And because it sounded like a, like a chipper white lady to my, to my ear. And it was like, no, that's what Google assistant sounds like. And they showed me like their version of Google assistant. And I was shocked because my Google assistant, Google knows to make mine sound more black or mine, my Google voice voice is a distinctively blacker voice than most other people's Google voice. And I can oh. even demonstrate that, but it shocked wow. me because when I do my Google voice, like I always say, okay, Google. And I say like, Hey, tell me a joke. It's almost like a black lady who's telling me a joke. And then I realized that Google has changed voices based on where you're located. If you prefer to hear things from men, if you prefer to hear things from females, if you're like a, a, a generic, no, I won't say generic, but if you're more of like uh, mid America, it'll be like a standard white lady. But if you're like, if you posted a lot of feminist posts, <laughs> you're, no, you're a woman and you're probably like on the coast of some sort, it'll be like a man's voice. If you're in Australia, it'll be a dude. It'll be a male voice because they prefer men voices over there. If you're in England, it'll be an English voice. And I didn't even realize they have it down to like what your, your, your race or gender or makeup is to be like, this is the voice we should use. They use colors. They distinguish them by colors, but like, it is very, very scary. Not scary scary, but intriguing how companies will modify your technological echo chamber so that the things that you take for granted are just like, oh, when I go to a computer and I type Apple, I get stocks. But when a third grader does it, he gets pictures of an Apple tree. And I'm like, Google knows this guy's interested in different things than this third grader. It's just very bizarre. Yeah, it is. I, I beg your pardon, but I, I find it very scary. <laughs> you know, I mean, from a from a political standpoint, wow. It, yeah, but scary in the sense of I know I'm giving him this information. So it's just bizarre that there are people, and there's no single person who's like putting together my puzzle pieces. It's all algorithmically based. And so, yeah, like, let's see. What, my neighbor doesn't. My neighbor doesn't understand this. Hmm. Tell me about your neighbor. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good. Larry, have you found yourself or signs of technological echo chambers that you can find yourself in? And oh, maybe I'm making more susceptible. Chambers. I'm sure. But what's funny is I was looking for a lamp. I went on uh, like Amazon and looked for a lamp for my desk. And I thought, you know, I, I bought one, closed out, went back to Facebook. All of a sudden I was inundated with, with advertisements lamps. For, for lamps. So you know they're communicating, and right. if they're communicating on that, how much other things are they communicating on? Wow! And, and really, the question is: Are they communicating in my interests or their interests? Oh, right, God. their interests their always. Interests. Right, and oh. that's what, and I think that's the relationship we largely have with technology for the most part. Like, yeah, it gives me some basal level of convenience, but there's a profit being made somewhere, and it's either through time, or through power, or through money. And if it's not costing me anything, then it has to be one of the two others, right? Yeah. And so right. we're either giving our information out to a company that wants our information for the sake of power, or for for some other you know benefit. But it tends to be that. Hey, what's up, George? Well, we have a we. There is a saying on the internet: if you're not paying, you are the product. <laughs> it's true. Think about it. No, yeah, it's, it's really good. true. And somebody, in other words, to rephrase what right. to rephrase what you were just saying, Wombat, is that um, these services can be very costly to provide. Mm. Somebody has to provide the money 
to fund that. You know, all the, I mean, just think of all the programmers who work for Google, all the software right. testers, all the writers, all the, I mean, she whiz, you gotta pay all these people. So I'll throw out one more thing before I get to a bigger picture conclusion on AI churches, but there used to be a company called TomTom. Tom. Uh, this is my oldest story, but they used to be Tom a map. T as in Tom, TomTom? Yeah, TomTom. Tom. Okay. They used to be like, hey, TomTom, Tom, get me to the grocery store. And you would buy this little computer that you could put into your car and it had a screen and it had all the maps of your particular town and you can download maps as you need it and it'll navigate you to where you needed to go and i was like "Ooh, tom tom seems like the best thing to use because before that i would have to use a website called MapQuest and literally print out instructions and drive mm -hmm. with yeah, those forms and be like turn left here at this exit I was like right, what's the next i needed a co-pilot to like read right. out the instructions to me right but then google came out with google maps and like when google maps dropped it's like why do i need tom tom this is free and it's the whole world. And not only that, but you can even see street view. I can literally see where I'm at on any street in the world. Like that's a huge amount of resources and investment that Google made that basically wiped out all competitors in the, I will make maps industry. And now like the current competitors, like the other alternatives like Waz get money from Google as part of a anti-competition grant, sort of like, Hey, you guys will be a separate company that tries to come up with stuff. We will pay you money to do it. And any cool things that you come up with can be yours for a limited period of time before we ultimately roll it into our... <laughs> It's the same thing Firefox is. Firefox is basically a subsidiary to Google. They get money from Google to, to make their own browser. And the cool things they come up with, like tabs, will eventually roll into Chrome after a certain oh, yeah. period of time. It's very crazy. But um, I, I wanted to say like a lot of things are connected and a lot of things are communicating and it's not always in our best interest so i get really terrified from the idea of ai gods or ai pastors because what you may end up with is an ai buddhist pastor and ai well i'm um, yeah i mean i'm thinking about um uh cambridge analytica okay you know a few years ago affecting the election oh. and i thought you know, and, and if I understand it right, it was it was feeding people propaganda on the basis of of their beliefs of, of yep. their, you know, what 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 was known about them. We're incredibly susceptible to it even now, Larry. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. What what kills me about this AI a preacher type of thing is that um, preachers, imams, um, um, all kinds of religious leaders uh, influence heavily influence the actions of their group. Right. Uh, they, they're pretty much, you know, they're God's representative on earth and what they say you have to do. Right. Um, but let's take, uh, Christianity as a, as an example, there are 613 commandments in, uh, Leviticus and Deuteronomy and the early Bible. Um, the, an AI wouldn't be able to put any weight more behind these commandments versus these commandments. Um, I would have to take human intervention to tell to weight the commandments, you know, one way or another. And then we'd have to pretty much take them all equally. So we would have this AI priest <laughs> saying that we had to kill witches or uh, kill homosexuals or uh, not allow a person into church if he's had his uh, private parts damaged, mm. um, you know, and, and, and looking at another person is, is adultery. You know, just one thing I have to know that, I mean, would you trust an AI priest to run your congregation? Uh, I mean, you, I think be, most, you would be one. It's going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's going gonna happen. to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. And, and Larry, this is what I was going to say, like how Google just completely wiped out TomTom. Tom. I'm thinking like you have one popular corporation that says we will make a subsidiary that isn't us, that is your pastor. And we will gather all the information from your congregants and we'll have that as a backplate boiler your thing but it's really our thing and it's the new ai pastor and everybody loves it and next thing you know an election comes by and they're like man i would love to put some of our democratic propaganda through your sure. ai program mm -hmm. can i give you some money absolutely here here right. you go Thank you. yes next thing you know yes. you have a whole congress just being yeah. crazy on one yeah. side or the other and i feel like it could serve yeah. to polarize well, how, how many how much fiction is out there based on something like this like especially future fiction mm -hmm. uh, there were star trek episodes uh called um brother landro drew or something where an ai has taken over the religion either uh, voluntarily or mandated mm -hmm. and generations later there is no other authority figure on the planet 
other than that AI. Yeah. It, it's very scary. It's functionally what Big Brother was in, uh, in I believe, 1984. Did I get the mm -hmm. name of that book right? Um, Big Brother being like this disembodied form of authority. 1984, almost, yeah. Yeah, so disembodied that you didn't even know if there were humans running it anymore. Like it was just instructions being <laughs> handed down by human authority figures, but who was the person at the top? And was there anything or was it just all a system at that point? Yeah. And maybe it wasn't an AI, but it could just be as bureaucratic as a, as a, a well-functioning set of rules that just feed well, back. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of, um, you know, what if Rupert Murdoch was in control of this, yeah. the market dominating authority? Yeah. And it would have different branches. You know, it would have a Buddhist one and a Jewish one, but it would have the different Jewish ones because right. there's, at, there's at least four <laughs> of those. And you know, it would have the it would have the uh, Lutheran ones. There's three of those in the United States. No, and there's so here, many. Here where I live, it would be the dominating. You know, the steamroller. Sure. No, I of, hear you. And, um, and, no, there's, it's reminds me of a joke. <clears throat> What's the difference between cults and religions? Um, in, in both, you had a person at the very top who knows it's all BS, but it, uh, that's cults basically, <clears throat> but is using it to gain power. In religions, that person has died. <laughs> <laughs> hey, should, should we go on to my supermarket story? Okay. Uh, yeah, go on ahead, go on ahead, go on ahead. Okay. Anyway, great topic, I, great topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> um, I, I would love your input on this. I, I had my first... Uh, automatic utterance. Well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I, I guess there's one, one supermarket here in my town where I have a habit of opening my mouth a little too much. Uh -oh. And I was, I was. It's Ingalls, which is a pretty upscale supermarket in these parts, and okay. it's a fun store. So they've got a lot of good stuff. So I was, um, I was walking around Ingalls wearing my mask because a lot of people have died here in my county and the death rate is going up and up and up right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm, I'm pleased to report that most of the old people that I see are wearing masks. They at least have some sense. But I passed, I, and I decided I'm going to smile at every old person I see who's wearing a mask. Uh -huh. <laughs> but they can't Which see I you. Which I can't see you. Yeah. Well, they can see my eyes are smiling, you know, when Irish eyes are smiling. You know. <laughs> Irish eyes are smiling. There we go. Yeah, and so I, I was walking around the store, and, and an old man came toward me who was not wearing a mask, but I smiled at him anyway. And we stopped to talk with each other, and he said, he said, where do you go to church? Oh, no. And I replied, I don't go to church. Uh, yes, that's right. Maybe I said, happy day. I said, I don't go to church. And he said, well, you should. <laughs> and I said, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> he said, why not? I said, because I don't believe in God. And he didn't know what to do. So yeah, we dude. parted. We parted ways at that point. No. But the, I mean, the yeah. question is, uh, in my town here, that's very Bible Belt. Was that the appropriate thing for me to do? Yeah, it was truth. And yeah, we we need to step up and represent ourselves. I mean, we're hardly a, a minority anymore. Truth, because we non-believers and nuns uh, represent fifteen to twenty percent of the population. And when I say nuns, I mean people who don't specify any particular religion, uh, not necessarily atheists. But um, that's a huge block of American public, uh, especially voting block. But the, the uh, powers that be, the religious <clears throat> political parties, seem to ignore us, like we're not there. Right. And it's important that we stand up and identify ourselves. Right.
on to that, but I probably would have said word for word what you said, George, and the trends are changing. Um, what's really unfortunate about our system is with the Electoral College, if you live in a very populated state, your vote doesn't matter as much as if you're in a uh, much less populated state. So like your vote in California is like maybe 136 of a person compared to what you could get in like Tennessee or even in Rhode Island, which is much more higher. And what we're seeing right now is a flux of people from very popular areas going out and, and almost like in a diaspora S sense going towards different areas of the cult of this country. A lot of people from California are moving to Tennessee one because California has a huge state tax and Tennessee has zero state tax. And that's like an immediate 12% bonus to your, your takeaway home pay. And so yeah, however, almost done, almost done. What's really good. What, I, what I'm finding almost done, almost done, but almost done, almost done. What's really good is that you can have people who have different cultures integrate themselves into places that are a lot more styed uh, culturally. And I, what I found from that is you affect the people who are around you by just being present and showing that there is an example of different trains of thought and different people. And I think that changes the culture. And I think just through integration, we can actually lead towards having a more informed and progressive society. And I think that's generally a good thing. George, what's up? I was just going to comment about this, this tax thing is that that's a fallacy, in fact, because what I've found here is that things, sales tax applies to so many things in this state that don't apply in uh, uh, that they don't apply to in other states. I'm appalled. You know, I pay sales tax here in Tennessee on labor to fix my car. This is the first place I've ever lived where, where you pay tax on labor like that. This is the only place I've ever lived where people have to pay tax on food, which is considered a necessity in states that have income taxes and therefore not taxed. In Connecticut, there's not even a tax on clothing because it's considered a necessity. So we're paying. It's just in a different form, and it's a regressive tax. It hits poor people more than rich people because it, we're paying this tax on the necessities of life, not so just the luxuries. So like, uh, I'm not saying one system's better than the other. I'm saying it's formatted in a way where if you are being taxed in California, you can't afford that it's kind of system. You can look for alternatives to have a uh, higher utility and usefulness of life. And a lot of people have weighed the odds and decided being in Tennessee is a lot easier for them than being in California, in particular for housing. And so they, yes. they move. And I think that's yes. really, really good on their part. Or yeah. it's good to have those kinds of people over here to mix in. It's not like California moving to New York because that that's almost like one for one in my head. It's like California yes. moving to like the Bible Belt. I'm like, oh, that's good. One, because <clears throat> the votes don't, your vote doesn't matter as much there. It has a much bigger impact here in Tennessee and it can sort of even things out a little bit. Ten, uh, Larry, what's up? Well, also, uh, I would, one of my first thoughts on that would be, yeah, but they're leave, excuse me, leaving yeah. a huge uh, pay, let's say, uh, people get paid more out there because it's more expensive to live. Sure. And then coming to an area that's kind of depressed like Tennessee, but with uh, work from home, I mean, you could work, live, basically live anywhere you want to. Exactly. Uh, get a good paying job out there where you're telecommuting and then come to Knoxville, hey, you got it made. Yeah. especially if you're getting the same monies. And what's happening is they're moving to the outskirts of Nashville, to the areas that don't have as much people, and then commuting into Nashville to do their work from California. So like they'll move here, but they won't move to the biggest cities. They'll live in sort of like the areas you're at, George, but they'll commute to larger towns. And it's like you have people who are a bit more different. At least that's some key word, different. And I feel like that difference is when you're around different people, your extremist points of views or your polarized points of views get watered down just by the function of knowing people who are different too. By the way, I want to, I want to really confirm what you just said, talk because to me, talk that, to me. that is my experience, you know, having spent so many years in New York city and in California too. Um, and, and when I say California, I mean the Bay area of San Francisco. Sure. So yes. Um, I mean, it's exciting to have so many different kinds of people around who you rub shoulders with on right. an everyday basis, you know. <clears throat> I think that kids kids going to, to public school and rubbing shoulders together with other children. Exactly. That's one of the that biggest is, that is, That is the most incredible um, breaking down of, of like racism and, yep. and 
you know, uh, a well, prejudice they, that I can think of. So, yeah, integration let's the do cure it. You know, let's do it. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how you pull it, it off in the real place. It's likely to go to an AI pastor, if anything. And I don't know. <laughs> that could be our takeaway. Uh, George, what's something you'd recommend we check out before next week? Do you have anything on your mind? Well, I recommended a movie last week, so I'm going to recommend it again. The right. Cave of the Yellow Dog is the name of the movie. Please do see it and do not read anything about it beforehand. Do not even read the box that the video is in if you're getting it in a box, because I will tell you why the next time I talk about it, and I will let you in on the secret that would be the spoiler if you knew it. Cool, cool. I want you to experience this movie as a work of art. I love it, I love it. Without any coloration. Okay. Yeah. Um, something I can recommend. Hey, listen, you have a vacuum cleaner in your home. It works no. just fine. It works just fine. It sucks just as well as anything sucks. Don't worry about the, don't worry about the new technology. Oh, you don't need a Wi-Fi connected vacuum cleaner. It's just a vacuum cleaner. Vacuum five <laughs> minutes once a week. You're good. That's it. That's all it takes. And if need be, clean it out and it'll work even better good as new. I think it'll be just fine. Don't buy things. Buy assets and think long term. That's my takeaway. Larry, what's up? Um... My book is The Atheist Society of No. I'm sorry, it's not. It's my book is called Atheism. What's it all about? My group is called The Atheist Society, of and the book is available on Amazon. You can find my YouTube channel by searching Daughter Five or Larry Rhodes on YouTube. Thank you for joining us at the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this show on Apple, iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, etc. Uh, my own content is found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, by the way, if you're a member of clergy, a preacher, imam, pastor, or priest, but no longer believe in the claims of religion, uh, there is help for you at the Clergy Project. Just go to clergyproject.org for more information. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.